Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and today I am painting a witch. Specifically, this is a fire witch and it is the next in my series of <laughs> uh, ferocious fantasy females. I didn't alliterate that on purpose, but I, it sounds good now that I have. <laughs> I should probably write that down. Um, but I am also celebrating reaching 200 subscribers. Last year around this time I had subscribers in the 30s after having been making videos for about 10 months. Besides low statistics I also didn't get very many comments at all. Uh, I wasn't I hadn't found the community really of uh, either the art or bookish community. I only found a few people and I hadn't uh, found a good way to engage with them I guess yet so I felt fairly isolated but then in December and then January of this year I found people who would talk back to me and um, people started watching my videos more and I finally <laughs> came more into contact with both the bookish and artist communities and now I feel very engaged and um, sort of enveloped in this this really loving group of people who are so encouraging and kind and positive. Artists who inspire me and bookish people who <laughs> give me really good book recommendations and also who just I enjoy talking to about books. And I just want to say to those of you who've been with me since uh, the very early days and also to those of you who are newer I want to say thank you because you have all been so kind to me and inclusive and very encouraging when I feel like I'm new to a lot of this still even though I've been doing it for almost two years now I still sometimes don't feel like I belong or like I know what I'm talking about or what I'm doing with my paintings and um, all the positive things that you guys say really mean a lot to me and help me to keep going so thank you. Now <laughs> to talk about the actual painting. Uh, first of all my inspiration. This was actually the first concept that I came up with out of all the four pieces I have planned for this series. That's because it was inspired by a book I read and I read this book back in, oh yes, back in July of last year of 2018. And it's a poetry collection and it's called The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one. So The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one is by Amanda Lovelace and I want to read to you one of her poems that uh, is very specifically along the lines of this piece. It is called The Third Lesson in Fire and it is the lit matchsticks tumble, tumble, tumble their way towards us and stop dead just before the flames would lick hungrily at our toes. We squeeze our eyes shut, bracing ourselves for our violent end. The thick air reverberates with I love yous and we will meet again. But the only thing that follows is silence. We reluctantly pry our eyes open when we hear the match boys in fury shouting in the background. We would never dream of letting the match boys use us to hurt you, the smoke murmurs soothingly. Shh, don't worry, we will make them pay for this, it whispers again, wrapping its way up and around our bodies until we're consumed by a protective gray barrier. We use our combined powers to turn the matches around, and the match boys aren't fast enough for us. You can see the connection probably already if you can tell what's going on in this painting. Uh, I told you I was painting a witch, so that's the central figure here, and then you <laughs> saw me painting some fires on the ground, and in the background that brown thing I was painting, but that I've now mostly covered up with the sky, is a pyre. So the concept for this piece is that some very unkind villagers who, <laughs> for whatever reason, didn't like her for the various reasons that uh, people in the olden days uh, killed for being witches in the old days. Some people have tried to burn her on a pyre, but uh, she escaped and it turns out that ironically she is in fact a fire witch specifically 
and she can control fire and so all this <laughs> fire on the ground around her are fires that she has made and she is walking towards the viewer and the uh, idea is that the viewer is one of the bad villagers who tried to burn her and so she's coming to uh, burn you. And so obviously quite a dark topic but it sort of fit with the Halloween feel and I was painting this mostly during uh, the Halloween month during October. I wanted it to come out on the 31st but I wasn't sure how to arrange that around my uh, Inktober pieces and also I just didn't feel like I was quite done with it so I decided to wait a week bring it out a week into November and that way it could be all nice and ready and I'm glad I did that because this is a very good piece to be celebrating my 200 subscriber mark on. The main thing that this painting is supposed to evoke is similar to my other piece about a witch, the sea witch. See there's kind of a, <laughs> a they're part of a set there, a sea witch and then a fire witch. Um, so with my sea witch I wanted to show feminine power and wisdom and beauty and um, not necessarily in the traditional sense but other ways of being beautiful and have her be a little bit scary and so I wanted this a witch to be a little bit even scarier less necessarily on the why side more on the <laughs> um, coming to get the bad guys sort of aside. And I also wanted it to be somewhat the classic idea of a witch, so I've got her in a black full-length dress with sort of witchy looking uh, sleeve danglies. This dress is actually based off a dress that I own. I wore it during my uh, Monsterthon wrap-up video and so that's where I got the idea for the red down her middle and I really liked how that turned out. I think she looks um, nice and medieval and also scary <laughs> and witchish and so I wanted there also to be a lot of contrast in this piece with her dress being super dark and the also all of the background being medium dark so that the fires would really pop and I feel like I accomplished that. I had to use some uh, masking fluid while I was putting on that dark stuff around the fires to get that right uh, but I think it ended up popping really nicely so I'm very happy about that and then while I'm working on her face uh, the reason that I put such deep shadows on her face is because I wanted her to look fire lit and lit from below so I did a lot of looking at many references online to try to figure out where to put the shadows on her face and I think that it actually turned out really well I was really worried about that especially at this phase before I put the line art on it, <laughs> it did not look good but it really made all the difference when I put the line art on her face there was the uh, the ugly phase there where I had no idea if it was going to turn out okay uh, when I'm working on her fingers, what I'm doing there is, <laughs> she's a fire witch, so I sort of imagine her uh, her fingers have gotten white hot at the tips where she's using her fire magic, and then it sort of goes to yellow and red as it gradually goes out from the tips where the most heat is. And then I put some shadows in the middle of her palms, which are supposed to just be shadows, but ended up looking like ash smudgy marks. So since it looked like kind of like ash, I figured that was all right. If you're wondering what all that nonsense going on with her skirt was. <laughs> that was me trying to get it to look like um, part of her dress was fire lit and trying to figure out how black fabric would look lit um, by fire. So that's what that attempt is about. <laughs> um, I feel like it worked out alright but that might just be because I know what I was going for. So you can let me know in the comments if <laughs> that part turned out alright. I do really like how it turned out the light under her breasts and on the underside of her um, arms. How that yellowness that kind of fades out into the black, I really like how that looks. So I think that lighting went alright. For her hair, I decided uh, to have her be an Irish redhead. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what went on there. Um, once I got done with the hair, it seriously reminded me of my mom. My mom's hair is not this bright a red, but it is, and has been for most of my childhood, this shape of curls. And once I saw that, I had a hard time unseeing it. So yeah, that was a little weird <laughs> working on that because my mom is 
a very gentle and sweet person. She's not a scary witch. <laughs> so it was very weird kind of putting that expression on a, a face that had hair just like my mom. But I haven't done a redhead for quite a while who wasn't an actual portrait of my mom. So I wanted to do a redhead and I had a lot of fun making her hair. Oh, by the way, I'm not sure. I don't think I slowed down enough while I was actually doing it that you could see the case. I was using Violet Connie Arts metallic paints to do her hair because I noticed when I used them last time they were very opaque and I had gone a little crazy with the background and gone over where uh, her hair needed to be so I needed opaque paint to bring some lightness back there so that's where I got those paints and I really like the color of that turned out I'm very happy with those there are not many watercolor paints that will go on like that over dark I didn't film it but um, in between finishing her face and doing the crows, I put some building shapes in the background because I wanted it to be clear that this is nearby a village, uh, sort of a medieval type village in the background, and have those just be silhouettes because it's nighttime. And then I decided to add crows because I always love paintings that have animals in them. It just really adds a lot of personality and just enjoyment and more to catch your eye. So I put in a bunch of crows because it's a very classic witch familiar friend. I guess there is a total of four crows going on. One on her shoulder because he's her <laughs> special friend and lots of others swarming around to kind of help her fight the bad guys. And then stars because of course stars are just beautiful <laughs> so I love putting them in my paintings and that was so much fun. And I did that with a white gel pen because uh, doing it with paint, uh, even acrylic paint over the top would be way more uh, stressful and work and would not allow me to get as tiny dots. I really like having some tiny dots mixed in with the bigger dots. So that went well and then I used some more yellow on the undersides of some of the crows to make them be lit up just like her dress though not uh, as extremely and then went over them with some micron pens to make them stand out from the background a little more and some white gel pens to give them highlights and a lot more shape because otherwise they were basically just silhouettes so i had a lot of fun making this and i am very proud of it I think it's more complicated than a lot of my pieces and done in more detail and I feel like I've brought a lot of different skills to bear on this one. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!